Okay, welcome back to the final round of the Sula Open, filmed by SM Productions. This is a Euro Pro Tour event brought to you by Dismania, and this is the front nine. I'm joined with Simon Lazat, the one and only trick shot master, and we're gonna run through this round. Yeah, guys, we're here on the coast of Norway. My personal first trip ever to Norway, and super challenging track. Challenging conditions, windy and rainy, and yeah, ready to see some action. Hole one plays 132 meters or 433 feet. Uh, OB on the left, OB on the right, and uh, this is a really interesting first hole to start with. Uh, it's a bonus birdie if you get it, but you see a lot of big numbers here. So we're gonna start out, I uh, believe, I believe I'm on the tee pad and I'm joined with Carl Johan Naibo, Oyvind Yarns, and Johanny Vino. Yeah, you can see everyone's wrapped up. It's about maybe just around 10 degrees Celsius, which equals 45 Fahrenheit. It is windy, it is rainy, and the play on this hole, you see a lot of different approaches to this hole, but the safe play and at the same time, kind of most rewarding play can be the roller, like you see Greg playing here. That was a nice little break there, jumped over that manhole. Uh, I'm up there for maybe about a 38 footer. Um, anywhere is safe on this hole is fine. A three here is a good number, but uh, if you can get a birdie, you're really looking to take over. So here's Johanny, he played a six under second round. Going standstill? No. I'm not sure which disc he's throwing. This is uh, the MVP's fast disc. But uh, he's been throwing them well. Yeah, I've known Yuhani for a couple of years. He's been he's been on the Finnish tour for a while. Super solid player. Uh, it looks like he got over on that one just a little bit. Whoa! You see some players sneak through the branches and, and go out of bounds. That one kicked down and he's just kind of kind of be stuck on the edge there. Uh, kind of up against the fence. Maybe a tricky approach. This is one of these, I don't know if it's quite a tweener hole, but it's definitely a hole where a three feels basically as good as a birdie. You won't really lose any strokes by getting a par. Here's Oyvind. Oyvind's also a local player who puts a ton of time in on the course. Oh no. Oh, short. He just barely missed the fence line there. So you see the fence line in front before the corner doesn't have chain link on it. Um, once you make the corner, you can kind of bounce into it. And here's KJ. Um, what is it, 11-time Danish champion? Probably more than that at this, <laughs> at this point. But yeah, KJ always, always in the hunt, always one of the favorites to win these European majors or... European tour events, and Whoa. wow, right off the corner. Uh, he was just a little inside on that one, but yeah, the one mistake. The one mistake you don't want to make is uh, to leave that roller short. Anything else is pretty safe. Ah, uh, Ivan, just a little short there, but that's a putt he can make. Trying to save bogey. Yohani taking the sidearm after taking a meter off the out of bounds. And he was in bounds, right? Yes. Oh, shot. Yes. And uh, that's going to be maybe a five meter putt, uh, well within his range. KJ, nice, smooth backhand ABR approach. Right up there. Now you're looking to make this. <clears throat> now here, all I was thinking was, make sure I lift it up. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, about an inch or two short there for the birdie. Uh, again, a three's not a bad score here, but obviously I would have liked to have converted that. Uh-oh. Wow, and that's a tester coming back for yeah. the double bogey. Yeah, I even just put a little too much on that one. Lead card pressure. 
Oh, oh my god. Yeah, he pulled that one too. I think I think it was more in his head than anything else on that putt. <laughs> yeah, but what, even, what what a guy. He like is was he assistant TD or something in, along those lines and super busy all week on the course and I don't even know how he managed to play at all and he yeah, played very well. He beat me by a 10. <laughs> With a triple bogey on hole 1. <laughs> With a triple bogey on hole 1. Yeah, that's a tough start for him. Uh, KJ tapping in the three here, and uh, looks like Yohani's going to tap in the three as well. Hole one only got birdied three times on today's round. So, really? Yeah, averaging 3.5, which is one of the better averages on this course. This course is extremely challenging, especially when the wind comes up. Right, so they were they were saying that they didn't design the course for windy conditions. They didn't design the course <laughs> for what we had to do. Yeah, this was a, definitely a challenging weekend for many players. I saw really big numbers on a lot of holes. Here we are, hole two. Uh, this is a tunnel shot. On the left side, you see the gate, and that kind of bumps you out to the left and give you a tricky approach. But really, you just want to kind of keep it low to the ground here. Um, you can slide up, kind of on this gravel. Uh, this is one of the, I would say, the more gettable part threes on the course. Yeah, this is one of the shortest holes. But uh, yeah, right off the tee, you see the mando on the left. This course has a lot of mandos. They really make you throw the tough shots. You, like, for me as a player who likes to air it out, like I never get those options because of all the mandos on this course. Uh, it was just a little short. Um, I just made sure I hit the gap. That's a good shot. That's that's the main thing at at this point. You know, I'm sitting with a little bit of a lead, so just to try not to let too many bleed away. Now we've got uh, Yohani. Let's go in the backhand mid range. He just got over on that just a little bit, but he's through the initial gap. Yeah, but also that's a decent shot. Like I've seen. So many players hit left, early left fence. You see a little guardian fence on the left and kick straight left, almost OB to that fence. And then it's a really tough KJ. upshot to save your three. KJ playing the rock and that just stayed on the right side, but really solid shot there. He's up on the green. I've been playing a Heiser stand up and that was a really good shot. Just kind of caught a bad break there on the ground. Johanny maybe from 30 Six meters, feet. 25 meters maybe. I get kind of mixed up with the meters to feet, so. I don't know, are we talking in meters or feet now? I'm, I'm getting confused myself. Well, let's I never stick know. to something, let's stick to meters. Okay. Wow, that's a good recovery after a triple on hole one. So he was just outside the circle there. Yeah, so. good 12, 13 meter putt. This is also just outside the circle. I can barely recognize you. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, um, that one I just really didn't commit all the way through the putt. KJ, Great splash putt. down. So he was inside the circle. That's a nice birdie for KJ. He's back on the board. Yohani taps in as I'm taking my time in the rain. There's always a, a process that I seem to go through, and it takes me a lot longer when it's raining. I'm not a big fan of the rain rounds. Wow, almost uh, a little falling putt there. Yeah, I snuck it in. I don't think that was a falling putt. No, definitely not. Clean. Clean. Once the disc stops in the bottom, then you're allowed to yes, yes, yes. step forward, right? I wasn't really too excited to have a comebacker on that hole, but... It's in the basket. Number three, this is one of the best holes on the course. So you have the initial gap here and uh, typically the wind pushes from the left to the right. But I think right now the wind's a little calmer than it had been. Um, it really likes to fluctuate out here. Just 
it'll be breezy at one moment and then it'll it'll die down and then the breeze will kick up from another direction but uh, this is a 126 meters so a little over 400 feet yeah the hazard on the left kind of can come into play but you have to throw a pretty errant shot to get that short and that left so I expect all these guys to get within putting range here that's a laser wow that looks perfect that is perfect. KJ with the park job. I would guess that was a destroyer, but I might be wrong. This all looks kind of short, but it's... I threw a high-speed distance driver here to make sure to get it there. This hole is deceptively longer than it seems. Yeah. Well, the basket's just kind of perched precariously within all these trees, so it just has a good look to it. You feel like you should toss it right up there, but... Um, this hole gets a little windier all of a sudden. It's not a gimme anymore. I'm taking a champion boss here. The boss? Ooh, flippy. Yeah, I hung it out, but notice how it's not breezy, so it wanted a hyzer back, and no! Oh, okay. That's not a bad spot. That's probably six, seven meters. Yeah. Yeah, a little tree to contend with, but I uh, should be able to sneak that one in. Team MVP. Yo, honey. Ah, he pulled that one over just a touch. And that is a tough spot to be. He really guarded there. Oh, even for two. Ah, nothing doing there. If you're on that left that side, you're really... I think you're just cut off. You can't really do much. Okay. Even if you wanted to putt it, there's a lot of limbs up on the right, so... I guess Johanny just laid up as well from he there did. where he was. And that's birdie. Got him. Yeah, I snuck that one around the tree and it hit left side. But in the basket, on the board. Finally got a birdie. I was wondering if I was going to get one or how many putts I would miss to start this round. Was, uh, didn't do much warming up before this round. It was really wet, so I'd rather keep my disc dry than go out and warm up yeah keep the dr towels dry as long as you can because you'll need them these were long rounds out there too we were out there for like four almost four and a half hours a lot of up and down a lot of walking through the beautiful mountains mm. of norway i think that was the first round that's that was I, you yeah. yeah that's where i landed the first round i remember that shot not a not a very easy shot from over there. Actually, you asked me if I ran that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hole four is <clears throat> the most four. controversial hole, I would say. Easily. Easily. I think there's multiple opinions on uh, on this hole there. The highest score was uh, 20. 21. I also heard of an 18. I heard of a 13 as well. There's a 13. From um, me. They, they're, um, this is one of those holes when I describe it to somebody is if uh, if you make a mistake you really just have to calm down and make your next shot really good yeah all of a sudden things can start to run out of control and if it's windy you really need to choose your disc wisely and make sure you get it onto the green now you when you took the big number you went for the green Exactly. This hole is about 140 meters, I would guess. 146, yes. So, for me, it's pretty comfortable reaching distance, but the course designers decided to put Ooh. the boards in front of the green. And not behind it. Not behind it. So, once you reach the basket, skipping back out of the back is very likely in the wet, short grass. So, it was kind of stupid to go for it. So KJ... KJ threw his hyzer. Oh, whoa. You can see the wind kind of play with that one just a little. And uh, I was pretty disappointed with that roller. Um, now I'm shooting three off the tee again. And uh, this time I made sure to get it over. So I missed this one really short, and then it just bumped up right in the fence. So safe, and I'm out there, but not really what you're looking for. No, you still probably have about 80 meters windy hyzer upshot from there. You know, when you're tucked on this fence as well on the right side, all of a sudden you don't really get too much of a run-up per se. You kind of just have to step and throw or play a standstill. 
Uh, Oivan with a really good roller there. Yeah, that's, that's in prime there. position. So let's see what Johanny's got for us here. Uh, takes a deep breath. Oopsie. Oh, no. So that never crossed, so he's going to go ahead and tee it again. So he just oh, stepped he took up. a couple of meters. Yes, yeah. so he stepped up right in front of the tee. Oh no, it stood up on him. Ob again. So he's going to be shooting five at his next throw. Um, I'm taking a star firebird here and just make sure I throw it hard and let it hyzer. It's in. That's a good shot. So I'm. Uh, I'm really I'm really happy with that shot because all of a sudden it, things can roll out of control on this whole big big numbers. Yohani leaving it low. Uh oh. Wow, Yohani is uh That's three OBs in a row. Yeah. Yeah, I took a thirteen and looking at the metrics you can see that twenty one players took worse than triple bogey. Wow. So eight or worse, which the this will average six point one. Wow. Which I really? think it's more than two strokes over par, which is the highest I've ever seen. That's crazy. I think that <laughs> some crazy. of those numbers got ran up a little bit though. Yes. Well, I've been playing a nice overstable second shot. And that is right near the basket. Kinda got a little roll out there, but he should be able to tap that in. So Yohani shooting seven. He's maybe got mm, fifty-five meters to the basket. Maybe fifty. Yeah, he's looking to park it now. It's up, and it's good for triple bogey. Wow! Three out of bounds in a row, and then a nice chip in. I had no idea that was going to happen. <laughs> nice. That's that's a great triple. I heard some kind of roar out there when I was already on like hole 15 at that point. Oh no. Wow. So KJ, after going OB on his drive, that was for his four. Now he's going to have an OB five. He'll be putting for six. six. Nice easy three for Oyvind there. Wow, Oyvind taking strokes on the card. Oh, big time. So KJ's putting for six. You're putting for five. Mm -hmm. And Johanny got a seven. Yes. Oh boy. So he's looking to get minimum two on everybody on the on the card. Good recovery from KJ though. So you kinda hear it now, it's starting to get maybe uh the wind's maybe starting to pick up just a touch and the rain has been coming down for a while. I noticed the leaning basket here. Little tailwind. Aye. Mm. On to the ground. Not too happy with that. That's Three out of four misses on the on the first four holes. So obviously I'm uh, not too stoked there. All right, we're back on hole five, 161 meters. This is a really tricky hole that you're playing down a tight tube. Um, you've got a couple options. You could play the hyzer out over the right side with a right to left wind, uh, or you could play a turnover over the football field. Uh, you see that those three trees on the left, that's kind of like the, the money spot in the landing zone, and unless you have a Simon arm and then you're just trying to park it. but. Uh, this hole is precariously close to the out-of-bounds line as well, so, uh, you know, the distance isn't necessarily a, a par four, but the difficulty of the hole makes it a par four. Yeah, you can see it's averaging still over par, this hole, as every single hole except for one hole on this whole course. So, 
Yeah, and the water level actually is so low because it's been dry for weeks and weeks. This is the first rainy weekend in like almost two months in Norway. So uh, yeah, they pull the line a good couple of meters off of the water line. So it's a lot tighter than it looks. KJ right down the middle. Or even right down the middle. That didn't go anywhere. Notice how it disappeared. It stayed on the roof. Wow, too bad you couldn't see that. Yeah, it just sign. it literally dug right under the stuff. And that's OB. That is out of bounds. Wow. Mmm, Johanny just kind of pulled it a little bit, caught a bad kick there off the tree. So I'm playing a sidearm with the new Scorpius. Playing it out and around. And got it inside the circle. Which uh, was a huge shot at that point. Things were not really going my way. Yeah, and you were making use of the new yeah. rule. Yes. So that was an interesting lie. If you look at it, the, I'm playing from a parallel out-of-bounds line where my disc crossed. But then also, there's a perpendicular out-of-bounds line that I get a meter off of. So that's kind of where some of that gray area comes in. Wow, KJ almost made that. <laughs> KJ almost cast I mean, he it. almost made that. I thought it was going in the whole way. Uh, Yohani pitched out, so he's sitting four. And a nice, easy chip side. Oh, caught the stuff coming in. No, Oyvind's choosing a grenade play here. Can't really tell, but he was kind of tucked back behind some stuff, so... He's right on the circle's edge. Yeah, the OB line is probably two or three meter, three meters behind the basket. So it, these are death putts. And the closer you get to the water, the windier it gets. Oh, even with the tester. Well, he that's dead center. Good putt. Yeah, he's he started zoning at this point. You can kind of see it in the strut. He he's coming. <laughs> He's back to par for the round. Wow. You can hear the wind now, too. Yeah, that was a nice four. All things considered, I was really happy to get a par there. Got a little high five from KJ, too. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he knows. Just, you know, that's the first real putt that I've got to go in this round anyways. So, uh, KJ looking to tap in his three here. Yeah, it's starting to get breezy. Straight headwind. So if you don't like the weather in Norway, you just wait about five or ten minutes and it'll change. Uh, Another double. Tough little two holes for Johanny. It's a great shot of KJ. Throwing his T-bird right down there. He's got such a smooth throw. Kind of effortless. Hole six, 122 meters. This hole is really tough. As you can see, the water line's low right now, so you have the strong OB line. Uh, there's not much of an option here. You have to clear, and if you don't, you re -tee. Yeah, this is one of the windiest holes on the entire course. Um, it's straight into the headwind. And this, this 220, 200, what am I saying? 120 meters feel more like 140, 150. Yeah, you just don't want to leave it short and make sure you throw it long. As you can see, Oyvin smashing it. He actually threw this shot a little bit too good. He has great power. He smashes. Yes. Yeah, so he's maybe 15 meters there, but with, a, with an interesting kind of a headwind look up the hill. So uh, KJ next. I'd imagine he's taking a destroyer yeah. and give it some height. Boom, yeah, he didn't leave that one low. And that's the big thing here. You just can't leave it low. Oh, he's he's gonna be right up there. He's got a good look at it. I'm I'm playing a destroyer here. Uh I'm also playing left of the basket and letting the disc flip over to kind of drag it. Looks pretty good. And this is the best shot that I threw on this hole through the week. Oh, wow. Without a doubt. Yeah, it's hard to see in this camera angle that little slope right in front of the basket. 
If you're short of the basket, you're pedaling basically straight uphill. Look at this one. That stood up perfectly. Ooh, and it stayed up there. Great shot. You Those honey. are two, two of the best shots of the whole weekend, probably. KJ, maybe from just outside the circle? Wind pushing left to right. Oh, yeah, the wind dropped him down. Oh, no. <gasps> Ooh, oh, onto the line, so he's safe. Wow. Talk about a turn of events. This will be a great par save. Bang. Nice. Boy, he slammed that in with conviction. KJ does that from time to time. He'll just... He just sends a beam into the basket. Yes. Very extreme spin putter. So this is for Oyvind's three. His second shot hit the stuff and then kind of did a curl roll back. Hmm. So that was for his par. As you can see, it's getting pretty breezy out there. It's nice to have a tap in. Especially with the way I've been putting the disc this round. So, as much as I can park them, that's, that, that's what I'm going for at this point. Back no to more, five stroke lead. No more putting. No more putting. So, after six holes, we have a nice walk out to the seventh. And back to a five stroke lead. Nice, wow. Yeah, like I said, Oyvind, after, after he took the big number on hole one, he made a nice little charge there. Hole seven, 146 meters. Um, this is a tricky hole. There's not a lot of room to move, and you have the mandatory tree on the right side, as you can see there. So you can't just hang a hyzer. You kind of want to play a hyzer flip inside out shot, or, uh, or just a hyzer that plays up to the left, and then try to just navigate your way onto this really precarious green. A uh, lot of undulation in the, in the earth here. And if you throw it a little too far, it's a sheer drop off. It's crazy how the camera angles don't show the, the slopes. Yeah, it's... This is so much more uphill than it looks. Yeah, so I'm just playing the destroyer there. It kind of got up and away. Um, That's fine. Wow, that was an interesting bounce. I thought, that, I thought that it was higher on the hill when I got to the lie. But that's a good bounce. Yeah, that's not too bad, really. Uh, again, this is a tough hole to navigate if you don't have the perfect shot like that. That is the perfect shot. And umbrella for, cam. For a basic umbrella cam. For, you know, for a basic hyzer shot, if you're not slamming the hyzer flip, such as Oyvind is right here, that looks... Oh, it just kind of drug on him a little bit. I was putting for two twice on this hole, got it pin high twice, but it's a smash. That's disgusting. Thanks. Yeah, that, that's a lot of torque coming out. What disc are you using to do that? I'm using the new Glow PD2s, which is on the flippier side of PD2s. There you go. Yeah, uh, I couldn't get my disc elevated enough to try to do that without bringing that Mando tree into play. KJ's going to take the destroyer here. Oh, he ripped on that. Okay, so it caught, but it kicked back out into the fairway. That like looked like he was trying to play it more aggressive than other rounds. Maybe yeah. he's trying to make a move. The breeze is up. KJ playing that sick putter turnover shot that he has. Didn't really see much, but that was phenomenal. That was a phenomenal shot from where he was, with the putter, too. So I'm taking a flick with the firebird here and unfortunately just kind of gets hung up in the wind and flies backwards were you trying to go over all the trees yes okay well once you throw it higher than like five meters here you pretty much are gambling yeah i needed to throw that with about 20 percent more power yohani with a solid upshot he's gonna be looking at his three nice eight meter death putt oh even from down below Oh, kind of clicks some stuff there. He's going to be maybe circle's edge, somewhere around there. So I have a small gap. They didn't really they didn't really show you, but I tried to lay that up. Oh, it looked like you were going for it. Right. I was proud of you. Yeah, well, the wind on the right side just kept this thing in the air, so it kind of looked like it. I wish I would have putted a little harder. 
maybe I would have made it on accident. I uh, do that all the time. The wind kind of just took Ivan's putter out of the chains there. Uh, here's Yohani for his three. Ah. Uh, the death putt got to him. But yeah, like it got most players. And that was just awful. I didn't really like the... I didn't really like the stance. You can't... I, I'm not a fan of this camera angle because you can't tell what's going on on the ground. Yes. This is such a weird little piece of land. So every every different place has like a different putting stance or... Yeah, uh, I wasn't a fan of that putt either. So that's a bogey five on... KJ had a sick birdie from his drive. Yeah. Like I said, that was a ridiculous, ridiculous upshot. He's so good at that turnover AVR. Like, he just like smashes it up and lets it turn over. He's good at most things. KJ is really good. Just at basically everything in general. Yes. Yeah, anything Frisbee related, he's good at it. Hole number eight, 86 meters up through the tube. This is a very uphill shot with a, a tight gap and the higher you throw it, the tighter the gap gets. Uh, again, this is a hole where you don't get much ground action or ground play out of it. You either want to throw it all the way up to the basket or that's it. You see the stumps that are, that are here and there right by the circle's edge, they can stop you up. And, um, it's definitely an uphill putt from circle's edge. Yeah, and that little log right in front of the basket, if you hit that, which is basically the perfect shot, your disc will most likely bounce back four to 10 meters. KJ, boom. That's quality, that's inside the circle. I think this hole is uh, more than likely one of the easier holes on the course, which is pretty crazy to me because it's still a tough shot. It plays 3.2, which is barely over par. I'm surprised. I'm surprised too. I, th I, th I would have guessed this should play under par. Maybe like a 2.8 or something. Oh, I've been with a perfect shot way up the hill. I'm taking the flick eagle here. And that one just came out a little high and tight. And Still putt? Yeah, it's gonna leave me 15 meters maybe. Straight up the hill. I said I didn't catch Yohani's drive, but he clicked an early tree on the right side. So yeah, this is maybe 16, 17 meters. Oh, that looked good. Come on, dude. I'm not very happy about it because I can't get a putt to go in the basket. So uh, that was the first one I actually felt good about. And then, of course, it hit a couple of limbs on the way up there and didn't go in. So I'm a little, a little bit frustrated. KJ chasing down his disc. Great birdie for KJ there. Two in a row. Yeah, Olivin's closing the gap. After his struggles on hole one, he's been super solid. Yeah, he's really starting to light up the course. You can tell that he's he has that home course advantage going now. The the conditions aren't maybe as nice as you know. It's just not a normal day per se. It's me. Hey, there's Simon. Bang! Did you throw that 200 meters? <laughs> Amazing. Um, Probably a great shot. Probably. <laughs> so hole nine, I think this is one of the most beautiful holes on the course. Yeah, this is a good hole. Uh, Call it the fish hook. It's 156 meters. Uh, you want to basically throw it out. You have an OB line on the left side after the initial gap. Uh, and you have that little bailout zone for the hyzers. Uh, as you come up, the way the hole turns is if you throw it far enough, you might be able to sneak it through the trees or then you have to play it out and around, keeping it tight to the trees. And then the basket sits perched on this nice little knoll, just enough to where you have to think about the putt. Yeah, that little dark bush you see in the middle of the fairway oh. is almost the money spot. You want to get just past that left, right or over it. So KJ missed the initial gap here, which you see those trees are kind of beat up. 
Um, I don't know how good of a lie he's going to get from that. Yeah, Oyvind's on cruise control right now. He's just playing. Right over that bush. Yeah, he's playing perfect. like he's played here a thousand times. That's perfect position. Should be easy three from there. Yeah. Yohani just a little low off the box here. Um, that should set up for a fairly simplistic four, but not much of a chance at the three. So I'm just trying to hit the gap here, make sure Perfect. that it gets over the bush. Oh my gosh. It's at this point I feel like everything, the wheels are just starting to come off. I can't even throw a good one and it, it just doesn't want to do anything. If you weren't wet yet, you're going to be wet soon. Mm. Yeah, you're right, totally. Going into that thing, yeah, this is not a fun place to be. I like to stay in the fairways on these kind of rounds. This kid is third? Yeah, here he is playing that turnover with the putter again. That one just seemed to get up oh, and float on yeah. him. It's hard to get that angle just right. So Cage is looking at a bogey probably. Honey, just playing the sidearm up and around. That's that's a layup from that position, I think. He accepted his par. So I'm on the knee, wow. foot shoved in there. Yeah, that's a really that's a really tricky shot. Hit about a two foot, three foot uh, gap, just to get a look. You know, the idea here is, I know Oyvind. He's going around here. I know Oyvind's gonna play the hole for the three. I know he's gonna get the three. Yeah. So I'm like, I just have to get an opportunity here. Yes. Try to stop the bleeding. Yeah, it's only three strokes between you two now. Mm. Yeah. And KJ's only a couple back in. Now KJ's climbed himself back into the race as well. And for the next couple holes, literally anything can happen. Yeah. You can go on a birdie fest or you can go on a double bogey run. <laughs> yeah, depending on the winds, things can get really hairy. Come on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's rolling. He's Great just, putt. He's just rolling at this point. No stopping him. You can't stop it. You can only hope to contain it. He likes it. This to match the three. This is a this is a good crucial moment. Yeah, yeah, crucial moment. Squared it. That's just big to kind of my own personal confidence level. Like, okay, I've got a birdie. Still Here leading. Go. Still leading. Still in the lead. Three isn't much, but I'm clinging to a small lead. Yeah, this was the front nine and. Next two holes are going to be two long par fives. And mm. then we go into the valley with the beautiful landscape shots. KJ not too happy. Mm. Everyone's under par. In total. In total, right? And most guys are smiling. <laughs> Yohani kind of had a tough start there, but he'll keep it going. Yeah, great work by SM Disc Golf for being out there, being being real troopers, filming in the rain, and driving seven product. hours from Oslo as well. Yeah, great product. <laughs>